Hey everyone, Kevin here with Divinely Design and I thought I would do a quick craft video. So uh, my last video, I went over how um, a, a hat that I had made, sort of a steampunk hat for a friend of mine as my gift. And I had a lot of fun making it, so I thought I'd make a new one or a, a, another one. And um, so this one, I thought I'd make one for me that I could actually wear. So what you're looking at now is sort of my drawing for the concept of of that hat. Um, I wanted to do one that looked like it was made out of wood and sort of had a porthole in it. And this was kind of, um, you know, an homage to the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, nautical, steampunky kind of thing. So this was my original drawing for it. Um, how I started was to figure out the diameter of the um, the hat that I would need to wear, right? So what I did was took a tape measure and measured my head, the circumference of my head, just above my ear, like where the hat would normally sit. And after I measure the circumference, I can figure out the diameter of the circle that I'll need um, by taking uh, the circumference and dividing it by pi. So it was, uh, my circumference was 23.75 divided by 3.14 gives me a diameter of 7.56. So I just took a piece of paper and cut out a, a circle of 7.56 diameter. And um, this will then be the hole for the, you know, where my head will go, but this piece will actually become the top of the hat. Um, I wanted to do the brim, and to do the brim, I just measured kind of a quarter of the circle here and gave it a two inch border. And um, really easy way to do that, uh, just take your piece of paper, a, a, a blank piece of paper, and take the, the diameter, the circle that you've cut out. I'm gonna take the, the middle point and put it right at the bottom of the paper. Line up the that quadrant, kind of. Okay. Then I can take a pencil and I'm gonna trace this curve. And then I would measure two inches up from that on one side. So I'm just gonna use my template here just to mark off where two inches was. And then I would take a compass and put the point of the compass right at the corner of the paper. And the other end goes where that two inch mark was. And then you can just draw. That'll give you a nice consistent two inch uh, border around that inner piece. Now I only cut out one quarter here, but when I cut it out of the fun foam, I cut it in one whole piece as one continuous piece. I just took my, um, uh, you know, my quarter here and started it on the piece of paper, then moved it and traced it at, so I could cut it out as one solid piece. The advantage to doing that is that you don't have any um, uh, seams that you have to put together. So, so this is the top of the hat. This will be the brim for the, the part that goes around, you know, where you wear it. The, the middle section that goes here is actually the diameter that you measured out or that I measured out was 23.75 inches. And I made mine six inches tall. So I cut a piece of foam, uh, fun foam, 23.75 by six inches. Now I'm using black fun foam and this is five millimeter fun foam is what I used. Uh, I ended up using two big sheets for this uh, project. So they come in, uh, it's like they come in sheets of like, I think it's like 12 by 18 or close to that, something like that. So I used two sheets of that to make this hat. Um, now I wanted to make the wood grain on the hat itself. So where I started was by, this is a thinner piece of fun foam, but I used an embossing folder and ran that through my embossing machine, which actually worked pretty well. But this is um, a thinner piece of fun foam. And then I had these sort of odd sizes, this you know round portion and the brim itself. So I figured out a way to kind of do it without using the embossing folder. So what I did was, just took my um, a straight edge ruler 
And um, this is actually this is actually a knitting needle, um, but uh, I've used it as a pointer before for projects. So, but it has sort of I don't know how you know it's a it comes to a point, but it's not real sharp. Um, so I use this to then sort of scratch in a line on the fun foam. So this is what my planks would eventually become. This is sort of the edge of the planks. So I measured this out. Um, and then in order to make the wood grain itself, this is, um, this is a stamping up pokey tool, you know, just a paper piercer. Um, and so I took that and basically made little scratches in the foam and just sort of simulated wood grain. And I just made, you know, sort of random patterns that look like, like wood. Once I had done all of that, I, um, I primed this by using a primer. This is, I used a bullseye water-based primer and sealer. Uh, this is just something I got from Lowe's. And then I painted on a, a black, um, acrylic paint and you want to use a dark color because you want that to get into those nooks and crannies so you want to use a brush and sort of just punch it in there so that you get the dark paint in all of those um, furrows that you've made and then you'll take brown paint and I used my finger actually a gloved finger and sort of dabbed it in the paints till I had it on my finger just very thinly and then just rubbed it over the top of it so that I wasn't pushing that brown paint into the the furrows that have been made and so this is what you get um, after you're done. And you know, you don't even, you don't have to be super careful when you're putting the, I mean, you have to try, you have to be a little careful when you're putting the brown paint on. See, so here you can see like, there's a portion right there where the brown got into the little furrow. So you lose some of the detail of that wood grain. But, um, but you know, I wasn't super careful. This didn't take me forever to do, you just take, your finger and kind of rub it over. And I used a mix of different kinds of browns to give it some depth. So I just didn't have, you know, one brown. Um, I used some red brown and then <clears throat> I actually used, I think, a little bit of yellow <clears throat> and some black at some points mixed in with the brown to make sort of a darker brown. Again, so you sort of get that faux wood grain look. And that's how I made the wood grain fun foam, which is the majority of the hat itself. And then there are several pieces that I tried to make metallic. I used a couple of different um, products. This is one, this is called Inca Gold. Um, and I used it in um, gold and this uh, other one, which is copper. It's just like a paste, um, like a really thick paste. Again, I used my finger to apply it. Uh, and the other product I used is something called Rub and Buff which is like a, another metallic finish. You only need a little bit, and again, you just sort of rub it on. So I used both of those to give some of the metallic pieces um, on the, uh, the hat itself. For the nails, uh, to sort of simulate the boards, I used um, enamel accents in black, and I just made little tiny dots along the boards to give it that sort of nail detail. Um, and then I have on the side um, several of the embellishments I made out of clay. Um, for this for the for this project I used Sculpey Ultra Light, which is an oven bake clay. And um, for some of them I have a mold. Um, this this is um, after you you bake it at 275 degrees for every quarter inch of clay. Um, I'm sorry, 275 degrees for 15 minutes for every quarter inch of clay that, you know, you're making. So something this really thin could be 15 minutes. But I have a mold that for some of my seashells and things like that, I just put the the clay into the mold and it's a silicon mold. So I, I cook the whole thing um, for some other elements like the tentacles and the anchor, which I didn't have a mold for. I actually crafted them myself just by hand. I sculpted 
sculpted them. And uh, again, for the anchor, which is metallic, I use some of the uh, Inca gold uh, rub on. And for the tentacles, I used a combination of just paint and um, art sprays uh, uh, to color the tentacles that green. And then I just added some other embellishments, some um, uh, some hat pins and feathers and things like that. So um, let me stop and then we'll take a look just walking through the, the hat itself for a minute or two. Okay, so here's the hat. Here's kind of all of the embellishments on the side. So you can see that anchor. Um, again, I sculpted that out of the Sculpey clay and then just used some of the metallic uh, Inca gold on it. It came out looking really fantastic. Um, a lot of these other seashell ones, um, like here, I have this star, and then I have this coral in the back, and a sand dollar, and a nautilus, um, and some other shells, and I have this compass. I, I used the mold, um, a mold, and just put the clay in the mold, um, and got those. Uh, the other thing I sculpted were the tentacles. Um, so again, I just sculpted these into, you know, spaghetti-like strands, and then added these little dots on it uh, to make it more look like tentacles. Um, this other piece down here, I should mention, um, is another product. Um, well, I use that ink of gold, the copper, but this is a round um, insulation foam. It comes like a tube, which I just cut in half to make it sort of look like copper piping um, with these sort of brass, you know, pieces that were couplers that were holding them together. And then I... I I did um, cut out the center section to sort of make it almost like a diving bell kind of thing. I put a piece of paper on the hat itself uh, because there's a light source in there. So it sort of makes it glow, um, which I also thought was kind of fun. This is actually um, half of one of those uh, plastic Christmas ornaments. You can buy it like Mo Michael's or um, I got mine at AC Moore. So you can buy plastic Christmas ornaments that come in two halves. So this is just one half of it. It fit, fit in there sort of perfectly. Um, you can see some of like, here's the detail kind of where I was talking about the nail heads and that using that enamel. You can see the wood grain in here. Um, it came out looking really great. Um, I, I just... The, the wood grain itself just um, looked pretty awesome for the boards. The, this is the other side of the hat, which is, you know, obviously much more plain, but the, the planks came out just looking great. Um, the one thing I probably should have done is I, I primed everything except for this pipe, which you know, I kind of wanted it to look like a copper pipe running around the bottom there. And I didn't prime that with my latex sealer and primer. Um, so uh, some of it sort of flaked off, but but otherwise, um, I think it looks really great. So here's a here's an example of a seam. You know, when you have um, when you have to join two together, I use contact cement, but sometimes you can see a seam. So obviously you wanna try and make as few seams as possible. Um, the back here, there is a seam where the, the, the hat comes together, but it, uh, it looks pretty good. You can barely see it. I, I made sure to put it kind of alongside or right in line with, you know, where the plank ends, which made it look pretty good. So, um, and then I just have some of these hat pins in here, which I've made and some feathers to give it a little bit of height. And then I have a couple of other things, some natural sponge, um, some rope that I braided to, again, to kind of go along with that nautical theme. Um, just some textural elements. Again, here, some more rope and things like that. So um, that's it. All right. Um, comments, questions, leave them below. If you like this video, click that thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please click on that subscribe button and check back here for more crafty and soapy videos. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye now.